It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for Ten. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for Ten. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Three things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl today. Two outstanding middle schools here vying for the chance to go on to become the last of our four semifinalists in this year's middle school competition. Let's meet the teams right now. First, from Drew Freeman Middle School, say hello to Kachiri Irving, Charles Butler, and Dejanay Tinsley. And from Samuel Ogle Middle School, here they are, Joshua Bastani Reedman, Austin King, and Hannah Flores. Now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green Things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body Systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing, and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. Here on the Science Bowl, we arrange our questions according to difficulty. The easier ones on the left worth 5 and 10 points. Tougher ones, 15, 20, ultimately 25, the toughest question of them all. Both teams start out at 50 points. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. Then to the two rounds today, one of these two good-looking teams will come back to play our game again and perhaps become the last of the four semifinalists. Let's go over and make sure everything works properly. Let's go to the red team. Charles, would you try your buzzer? Thank you, young man. Good luck to you, to, to Kachiri and to Dejeuner. And Austin, would you try the green team buzzer? It looks and sounds just fine. Good luck to you, to Hannah and to Josh. Are we ready? Let's do this thing. Congratulations on being picked to represent your schools. Nobody loses on this game. You're good ambassadors no matter what happens today. We go alphabetically. D before S. So Drew Freeman and Charles, let's play the science bowl. Give me a category and a number, Charles. Uh, science potpourri for five. Science potpourri for five points. Teams, who knew that Barack Obama had a fermentarium in the White House? Yep, he's got hops and barley and water, and he's brewing himself somewhat. Beer, beer. Samuel Ogle? Beer. Beer. Beer, that's right. They're making beer in the White House. And people are going online to get the Obama recipe. Go green. Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, Good Morning America anchor Robin Roberts recently received a transplant of this vascular tissue that contains the red blood cells from her sister. What spongy vascular tissue where red blood cells are made was donated to Robin Roberts, Samuel Ogle? Bone marrow. Bone marrow, absolutely right. She got it. Her sister was a perfect match, and we wish her well. Good answer. Go, green. 15. Zoo Parade. Zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points. Seems look at the monitor in the studio, please, if you would. This is a math question, but wait, don't be tricked. The leggiest creature on Earth is this white millipede, which has 750 legs, which is how many short of how many you would think it would have as a millipede. Um, Samuel Ogle? 1,000 minus 150. 250. 250. 250. That's right. Millipede means a thousand legger. Since it's got 750, it really should have 250 more. I don't know. So I'm going to have trouble getting shoes as is. Okay, go green. Um, green things 25. Green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. Teams, giant sequoias and redwoods are the largest gymnosperms on earth. The giant eucalyptus tree is the tallest of these on Earth. Angiosperms. Samuel Angiosperm. Ogle. Angiosperms. Angiosperms, or flowering plants. Yes, the gymnosperms, the giant sequoias, and the redwoods produce cones. They are conifers, and of course the eucalyptus is a flowering plant. Okay, all green so far. Keep it going, Austin. Super 825. 
Sue prayed for 25. Sue prayed for 25 points. Teams, some of the migrating birds that got caught in Superstorm Sandy weren't killed or blown off course because all birds seem to have a kind of avian barometer that keeps them away from harm's way. What? Um, they can tell uh, Samuel, oh, where, oh. The, um, where the air pressure. They can tell the difference in the air pressure. Absolutely right. A barometer can detect changes in air pressure so the bird knows to avoid the low pressure center where the center of the storm is. Thank you, Hannah, for your assist on that. All right. Charles and Dejeuner and Kachiri, got to jump in here. Faster on that buzzer. All right. Three heads better in one. Okay, go Austin. Body systems 25. Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25 points. All right, Drew Freeman, let's get this one and get back in this game here. Teams, what E initialed body system consists of the adrenal gland, the pancreas gland, and the hypothalamus. Drew Freeman. Echrona system, echron system, echron system. Mm, not quite, not quite, Samuel Ogle. What E initialed body system includes the adrenal gland, the pancreas gland, and the hypothalamus, all of which produce hormones that are poured directly into the bloodstream. Endo endocrine. endocrine. Say it again, please. Endocrine. endocrine. Endocrine is absolutely right. I think that's what you're trying to get out there, Charles. Nice try. Go again, Green. Let's get physical 25. Let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25 points. Teams, we all know that if you want to find out a tree's age, you can count its rings. But recently, Paleontologists have discovered much about an ancient Mayan civilization by counting the rings in these calcium carbonate icicles that come up from the floor of caverns. Stalagmites. Samuel Ogle. Stalagmites. 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 Absolutely right. The stalactites are the ones that hang from the surface, from the ceiling rather. They're a bit spindly, but the ones on the bottom. Those concentric rings of calcium carbonate tell a lot about the climate of those past civilizations. Nicely done. Go, Ogle. Science potpourri for 25. Potpourri for 25 points. Teams, if you go into the hospital and you're going to have lipoplasty or liposuction, what are they trying to remove from your body, Samuel Ogle? Fat. Fat, that's right. Liposculpture, liposuction, lipoplasty to get rid of fat from thighs and buttocks and other places. Okay. All right, Drew Freeman, they're just anxious to get in there. They're just kind of waiting their time here. Go, Austin. Dateline science for 25. Dateline for 25 points. Three-part answer. I need all three. Teams back in 1987, Sir Roy Cowan, a British surgeon, was the first ever to transplant three organs at the same time. He transplanted a hepatic, a cardiac, and a pulmonary organ all at once meaning he gave that patient new what's, all three of them. All right, Samuel Ogle, what three organs did that patient get the first time there was ever a triple transplant? A heart, a pulmonary, what's all pulmonary? Um, a heart, a lung, and a kidney. All right, Austin, what do you want to sell me? A heart, a lung, and a kidney. Heart, a lung, and a kidney. Nice try. Come on, Drew Freeman. You can go to the break with the correct answer here. This transplant involved the, uh, a hepatic organ, a cardiac organ, and a pulmonary organ. A heart, kidney, liver. Ooh, almost. It is liver, heart, and lung. All right. You were dancing around it. Nice try, both teams. Our score right now, 210, Samuel Ogle, 50 for Drew Freeman. Second half coming up. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Jordan Sparks, and my I Matter You campaign is all about making a difference, and SOS Children's Villages does just that. I cannot believe how many children SOS has helped around the world by building villages, helping abandoned children, and giving them a mother and house to grow up in. I'm calling on everyone that I know to support SOS in their efforts to help kids at risk of abandonment in countries like Sudan, Vietnam, and Haiti. SOS helps these children over the long term, and you can make a real difference in a child's life. M-A-D, making a difference. That's what it's all about, and 
SOS is one of the best. You've got to check them out at SOSUSA.org. SOS Children's Villages gives homes and hope to children in need all around the world. Join SOS and Jordan Sparks in making a difference. Visit SOSUSA.org to learn more. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Nice to have you with us today. I hope you're playing along and testing your own science IQ as we have these two fine teams vying today in our competition. Let's meet the first of the two teams from Drew Freeman. They're all in yellow over there. They're wearing their school uniform today. And Drew Freeman uh, down there in the Suitland area. Uh, who's your principal, Charles? Dr. Viola D. Okay, out there rooting for you today. Oh, and uh, who's the sponsor of your team? Miss Lynn Goldberg. Miss Goldberg. She's in the other room. She is telepathing the correct answers to you as we speak here. And you had a couple alternates too, didn't you? Yes. Who are they? Christian Perla and Michael Stewart. Thank you for mentioning the names. And we'll bring them out with Miss Gober in just a few moments' time. Charles, uh, I like to ask teams when they come here what it is about their school that they like to brag about. What is it that is really great about going to Drew Freeman? Um, we really have a great girls and boys basketball team. Mm. And we have a very good music and chess club. That's great. And I know you're involved in a theater production, uh, yes. yes, Virginia, and you're putting it on over at the Suitland Auditorium. Uh, you have an awful lot of things you do in your spare time, and you have multiple career aspirations. Tell the folks at home a little bit about yourself. What do you want to do someday? Um, I want to be an actor, a lawyer, a Supreme Court judge, an engineer, or a history professor. So many good options out there, and I can see the actor in you. You have good stage presence, Charles. And in your spare time, what do you do? Um, I sleep, I eat, <laughs> I sing, and I like to read. Well, you're an interesting oh. young guy, Ooh. and they chose well, making you the captain of the team. I know you're going to get some points in the second half, right? I, I'm going to try my best. I know Mr. you Z. are. All right. <laughs> Dejeuner is, uh, she's a great cook. She tells me she makes a mean chocolate cake. She wants to grow up to be the private chef of somebody famous. Someone famous is going to be lucky to get you. How long have you been cooking? Uh, like 11, since I was 11, 11 maybe. 11 years old. Who taught you to cook? Mm, my mom, my great-grandmother, my grandmother. Just Boy. a little bit from everybody. That is how it works. Those recipes are passed along and all those little tricks in the kitchen. Uh, so you're obviously good at science and chemistry because Cooking is a lot of chemistry. Uh, what else do you do in your spare time when you're not cooking? I like to dance. I'm a cheerleader. I like to create things, like play around with um, uh, like chemicals and things like that. Yeah, you're careful when you do that, of course. Yeah. yeah. And who do you cheer for? Um, I cheer for the um, Hornets. The Hornets? And there's no team at Drew Freeman, is there? Uh, there is. I just choose not to cheer with them. Uh, that's all right. And Kachiri, how about yourself? Tell me what you hope to do someday. Well, I hope to become a um, certified public accountant. Yeah, so you're a good math student as well. And you do lots of things in your spare time, don't you? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. I ski, mostly swim, um, watch TV, talk on the phone. Very good. All right. Well, it's nice to have you here. And I know you're going to help Charles with some points in the second half here, right? Yes. Okay. Let's go over to the Samuel Ogle team. And if they look familiar, they should because they were here with us last year. They're eighth graders now. And uh, it's great having them back. Samuel Ogle is in Bowie. And Austin, who's your principal? Mr. Covington. Wonderful. And I know he is a big fan of Science Bowl. And Miss Maxwell is your team sponsor. She has been the sponsor of the Samuel Ogle team for many years. She's a terrific educator. We're lucky to have her on Science Bowl and here in Prince George's schools and should love to get a championship this year. And you're well on your way with this first round here. Austin, tell me about yourself. What do you see yourself doing someday? Well, I want to be an engineer, so I'm going to try to get to Roosevelt because yeah. so, they have a great program for engineers. Indeed they do, and they'd be lucky to get you over there, Austin. Uh, before I move on from you, tell me about Samuel Ogo. I know Charles said there were so many great things, great clubs at Freeman. What about your school? Well, we have a lot of great teachers and staff, and we have a lot of great kids that like want to understand you and want to help you learn. Yeah. And obviously, that's what a teacher wants, uh, hungry and eager minds, and you guys have those, and uh, 
you're lucky to have such dedicated teachers there. I appreciate you saying that, Austin. Uh, Hannah, young lady who knows exactly what she wants to do, very specific, and her eyes light up when she talks about it. She's a, a great science student and math student, and you want to teach someday at the University of Maryland, don't you? Yeah. What would you teach? Um, I want to teach chemical engineering. Um, it's, uh, I think that's a great combination because I like math a lot, and you have to, all the equations for chemicals and finding new things. And then I always also wanted to be a middle school teacher, so I thought chemical um, engineering, being a profesh, uh, professor in that, would be uh, a really good combination. I think so, and I don't doubt that you're going to be very successful at that. And I know you like to read as well. You're a big Harry Potter fan. <laughs> yeah, good to have you on the show. Josh, nice to have you with us. Tell us the Josh story. Now, you play soccer on the same team as Austin. I, Hannah, you're also a soccer player. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh, why do you like being on the show? Um, because it's just fun, and I get to learn more about what I love, which is um, science. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah. And what do you want to do when you get older? Um, I want to be a scientist at CERN in Geneva, Switzerland. Tell people at home what CERN is. Um, it's the center for it's the center for European nuclear research. And um, it's also they have a cyclotron there, do they not? Yeah. Yeah. Well. I um, like to see. Hope you get to go there. Uh, it's in a great place in Switzerland, too. All right, let's get back to our game. 210 for Ogle, 50 for Drew Freeman. Lots of points to give away. Green team, start us out, Austin. Science potpourri for 20. Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. Teams, if you feed cattle these kinds of medications like penicillin, they will gain weight, even though we don't know the mechanism by which they do gain that weight. Penicillin is a kind of what? Samuel Ogle. It's a what do you think, guys? Oh, it's a fungus. Fungus? Not a fungus. fungus. No, not a fungus. Good try. Drew Freeman, penicillin is what kind of medication in that we, if we feed them to cattle, they gain weight, which even though we don't quite understand the mechanism. Steroid? Good try. An antibiotic. An antibiotic. Antibi a lot of times you'll see beef labeled as antibiotic free. Um, but unfortunately, not often enough. Try again, green. Green things, green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. Here's a multiple choice question for you. These cacti live in a very arid environment, but their tissues are very moist, which means they're known as exotics, hydrophytes, or succulents. Right, Samuel, hydrophytes. Oh. Hydrophytes. hydrophytes. Not hydrophytes. Good try. These moist plants that live in a very dry environment. Are they known as exotics, hydrophytes, or succulents? Succulents. Succulents is right. Yes, indeed. Okay, red team, go. Charles? Um, I'll... Huh? Okay. Yes, sir? I would like great things for 15. Green things for 15 points. Teams, 6,700 years ago, the Peruvians were exploding this plant by putting whole cobs of them onto hot rocks. Oh Samuel God. Ogle? Corn. Corn, that's right. They were popping corn way back when. They didn't have Orville Redenbacher, but they had hot stones, and that did the trick. Okay, go green. Dateline science for 20. Dateline science for 20. Dateline science for 20 points. Multiple choice question, teams. They recently exhumed the body of Yasser Arafat, the late head of the PLO, because they suspected he was poisoned. They were looking for traces of a chemical whose chemical symbol is PO. Is PO plutonium, potassium, or polonium? Um, Samuel Ogle? Uh, what? Uh, polonium, I think. Polonium. Polonium. Polonium, absolutely right. Not plutonium or potassium. Polonium 210. They found traces of it in his hair. They suspect that uh, his was not a natural death. On these multiple choices, jump in there. You got nothing to lose here. Go green. Uh, Zuprade 20. Zuprade for 20. Zuprade for 20 points. Teams, because on any given day, the temperature of a snake can actually be higher than that of a rabbit, describing these kinds of animals as these kinds of animals makes no sense sometimes. Drew Freeman. Okay. What do you think? It's because, because a rabbit is a babble and a snake is a reptile. It's cold-blooded and warm-blooded. Absolutely. Warm-blooded and cold-blooded makes no sense. That's why they call it, they call it 
homeothermic and poikilothermic. Okay, because they, one can control its body temperature internally, the other one depends on external. All right, good answer. Thanks for pulling that one out of the hat. Go. Um, let's do dateline for five. Dateline for five points. Teams, strange but true, recent photographs of the planet Mercury show that even though it's the closest planet to the sun, Samuel Ogle. There's space on Mercury. That it has ice? It has ice on it, absolutely right. Enough ice to bury Washington, D.C. a couple miles thick. Imagine that. Okay, go Green, you were ready for that one. Um, body systems 20. Body systems for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, if you take too many Tylenol or other pain-reducing aspirin, you can overload, Charles. Or overdose. You can overdose, yes. And the reason that the overdose is so dangerous, Samuel Ogle, is because this internal body organ, which is your detoxifying center, can't handle it. The kidney. kidneys. Not the kidneys, oh. the liver. The liver is the detox center there. Go again, please, Austin. Choose. Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Teams, in the animated movie Up, the little scout, Russell, knew that his house was in trouble because he said to Mr. Fredrickson, what kind of clouds that are sometimes called thunderheads? Um, Samuel Ogle. Uh, cumulonimbus. 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 You bet. Absolutely. The cumulonimbus, those thunderheads. And of course, they popped a lot of those balloons and a lot of havoc resulted there. Thank you, Hannah, for your assist there. Okay, go. Austin, good answer. Science Popery for 15. Popery for 15 points. Teams, recently, because of Superstorm Sandy, the New York City subway system flooded. They say it's not going to happen again because I've got these giant balloons that they're going to expand inside the tunnels. They're going to press against the walls. They'll keep the water out. And the force that keeps the balloons against the wall is what? What's the force that keeps those balloons stuck against the wall, Samuel Ogle? Air pressure. Air pressure. Air pressure. Not air pressure. Good try. Drew Freeman, these expanded balloons that are going to be inside the walls of the subway tunnel to keep the water out, the force that's going to keep them snug in the tunnel is what? I'm going to let Kachiri Irving assist. Oh okay, what you want to tell us? Um, friction. Friction it is. Good answer. Nice defer. All right. I like seeing those high fives. Go Drew Freeman. Okay. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five points. Teams, even though, listen, even though this liquid metal is rarely used in thermometers anymore, Samuel Ogle, mercury. Mercury. mercury, even though it's not used, a lot of times if the temperature is rising, they say, this is rising. The mercury is rising. Go green. Dateline science for 15. Dateline science for 15. Dateline for 15 points. Teams, Rosalind Franklin worked every bit as hard as Francis Crick and James Watson to discover the DNA molecule. But she did not win one of these prizes. Samuel Ogle. Nobel. Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, Nobel. Just Nobel Prize. Nobel Prize. Just Nobel Prize, absolutely right, because the prizes are not awarded posthumously, and she died before she had a chance to be recognized. One of the great tragedies of science. Go again, please. Green. Let's get physical. Let's get physical for 15. Let's get physical for 15 points. Multiple choice question. Let's see how much American history you know. NASA now wants to put a space station on the far side of the moon which will be the first time in 40, 50, or 60 years that we have gone beyond low Earth orbit with human beings. 40. All right, Samuel Ogle. 40. 40. 40 it is, because the last moon landings were in the early 70s. Nicely done. Go green. Um, green things 10. Green things for 10. Green things for 10 points. Teams, experienced chipmunks know to build their nest under white oak trees and not red oak trees because these are so much sweeter from the white ones. Samuel Ogle. The acorns? The acorns. The acorns. Acorns? Acorns, absolutely. Acorns, you know, not all, all acorns are the same. Some chipmunks are connoisseurs. What can I say? Go green. Zooprade for 10. Zooprade for 10 points. Teams, a new book called Flight Behavior written by a woman who lives in Appalachia, is all about her efforts to save this beautiful insect that flies from North America to Mexico every year. Samuel Ogle. Monarch. Monarch. Okay. monarch butterfly. The monarch butterfly, absolutely right. The king of the migrating insects. All right, green again. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. Teams, this is very interesting. 
The right hand part of this pair of organs has three lobes. The left hand side has just two because there's got to be room for the heart to stick in in the cardiac notch. Samuel Ogle. Lungs. Lungs. The lungs. He's getting it from both sides, right and left over there. Yes, the left lung has to have room for the heart, so there's a little notch in there. All right, good. It, nicely done. Let's Green. Get, let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. All right. Shakespeare might have been talking about a red giant or a white dwarf when he said, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our what? Charles. Blood. Not blood. Yeah. Nope. Samuel Ogle, Shakespeare might have been referring to a white dwarf or a red giant when he said Brutus, uh, the fault Brutus is not in our what? Star. 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 Stars, absolutely right. White dwarfs and red giants are stars. And with that, we come to the end of our game. We'll be back with a wrap up in just a moment. Don't you go away. Hello? Hello? I've been on the street for a while. I've been on the street for a while. I saw your post on site. I saw your post on site. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. National to Runaway do. Switchboard, how can I help? Call 1 800 Runaway to make the connection. you enjoyed this game at home our score is not that close but all six of our young people are exceptional students and we're proud of each and every one of them our final tally today is drew freeman 105 samuel ogle 345 what a day you guys had over there josh and austin and hannah congratulations we're going to see you in the next round and austin is just trying to smile just a little bit he's been so stern all afternoon miss maxwell i know how proud you are of this team and ryan and nancy the alternates wave to the, everybody back there Nice to have you with us. And I want to see some smiles here. You guys went up against a team that had a year's experience. Kachiri and Charles and Dejeuner, you played a beautiful game. You guys are just great kids. We loved having you here, Miss Gober. Thank you for bringing them and for being part of our game. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Bye-bye.